Hi, welcome to Troop TV. I am David Nava, owner of Brother Bear Website Design. I train veterans to build websites. I am a veteran, entrepreneur, community activist, and host of this TV show. Uh, I'm here with my co-host, Louis Samayoa, IT specialist, also Sergeant Kuhn, uh, U.S. Army, recruiting El Monte, California. Uh, so, uh, just a little background for those of you who uh, have not seen this show before. This, sh this show is geared towards uh, helping young men and women with no clear direction or, or no, uh, no money for college to understand that the military is an awesome starting point. So uh, in my own experience, when I was 16 years old, I actually was trying to leave the San Gabriel Valley and uh, join the military. Of course, I was a little too young. So uh, I went to the recruiting office and met someone like Sergeant Kuhn, and uh, uh, they gave me a little test and told me, oh yeah, you're, you're definitely smart enough to join the military, so, so come on back in a couple months. And I came back, I scored very high on my ASVAB test, and uh, I joined the military when I was 17 years old. So uh, in my experience, the military was probably the best thing that I did in my life, and I can tell you, that growing up in the San, San Gabriel Valley at that time in the early 70s, there were lots of gangs, uh, there was lots of gang activity. Many, many of my friends regrettably ended up in prison, dead on drugs or, uh, you know, just, just really bad. And I can say that uh, those of us, it was about 10 of us that got together and joined the military. Uh, I would definitely recommend this. I actually signed up uh, to be a combat engineer, which was uh, very just the next step up from infantrymen. But when I re-enlisted in the, in the Army, after my first three years, I went to electronic school. So many people ha are confused and believe that the, if you join the military, you're gonna go somewhere and get shot at. And that is not the case in, uh, in many, in, in most of the instances. We have so many different, what we call MOSs, uh, military occupational specialties, and uh, those are different career fields. So um, at this time, I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Samayoa. He's going to uh, describe what he does a little bit, and then uh, we'll talk to Sergeant Q. Yeah, welcome to our show. Um, I like to say that uh, opportunities usually come knocking on your door every day of your life. Um, the Army brings a lot of opportunities to those of you that are thinking about embarking on that career. I was earlier talking to, to someone and I was asking the question um, whether technology is important for our society. And he expressed to me that he thought that we couldn't go anywhere without technology. But technology has evolved over the last few years and, uh, and a lot of different uh, um, advancements have taken place and one of them has been uh, computer technology, uh, telecommunications. Uh, we have a lot of different um, devices, uh, software that have, have been created for technology and people have been using this technology to generate money to make their life more comfortable. Um, personally I like to, to, to say that um, over the 16 years of experience that I have in this field, I've been witnessing different changes in this field, and uh, one of the changes that I've seen happening lately is in the, in, in the operating system area. Uh, we all know that Microsoft dominates that in the, the share of the market. And so and we're talking about computer technology Computer now. technology now, yeah. So I've been uh, devoting my time to promote uh, another operating system that's not created by Microsoft and this operating system is Linux. Uh, Linux provides the same features as Microsoft and more, and uh, it's, it's gaining popularity as time goes on. So I'm promoting training on this, um, on this area so that people can actually start a career in this exciting field. And you're an instructor in? I'll be starting a training here in the South of Money, and I'll be providing uh, Linux training from beginning to advanced. And this is going to start um, beginning of next year. This is a short-term program? It's a short-term program. Every, every single level is three and a half months. It starts at uh, beginning level and then goes to intermediate and it goes to advanced concept. So 
I'll be teaching um, people who don't know anything about computers pretty much anything they need to know to, to administer a uh, Linux computer at their home or manage a big, a big enterprise. So, Lewis, how does your program uh, compare to a junior college program, say? Usually, uh, when you go to college for these type of uh, courses, you have to take semesters worth of material. And it will take you, um, it will take you at least two years to, to become a network administrator. And uh, with this accelerated courses, you can become proficient within six months. You can be ready to actually pass a certification exam and be on your way to getting a good job where you're going to be paying, you know, good money. You know. So what is the outlook? Uh, well, the outlook is very, is very good, especially in this industry. Um, beginners, you know, like entry-level Linux uh, professionals are making salaries you know, that surpass the $55,000 a year limit and go up to like 125000 to the advanced for the advanced, uh, the senior administrator. So it is a good feel and it, and it has a very promising um, news for those people that, uh, that want to start in this career. I see. Louis, how long have you been in this field? I've been uh, 16 years, 16 years in this field. And I understand uh, you were very successful. Very successful in this industry. Uh, I have, uh, I teach uh, technology and also have my own clientele. I'm a consultant, IT consultant, so I help companies to get you know, their infrastructure together and the administration of the network together. So I provide consultancy and education services. I see, and I understand that uh, you have uh, some information there on, on your... Yeah, I'll be, I'll be soon, I'll be starting a, a like I said, a program um, um, on Linux, beginning, beginning Linux um, January next year. January next year. January next year. Almonte. If the, in Almonte, in South Almonte, if people want more information, they can call me uh, 310-881-4023, and I'll be happy to help you. We'll give you more details on this program, and I look forward to seeing you there. I see. Great. Awesome. Okay. So uh, let's uh, switch gears for a minute, and I have some information that is coming from the American Legion magazine. I am... Uh, I am an officer at uh, Monterey Park, American Legion, Post 397, and uh, I think that the American Legion is, is a, a very uh, great organization for veterans, whether you're still in the military or whether you've uh, received your honorable discharge. And we also have uh, memberships for, for uh, Sons of American Legion and also Women's Auxiliary. So, if you become uh, part of this organization, which is only uh, it's about thirty-five dollars a year, you'll receive this magazine and just uh, two small uh, items that came out of the magazine that that is so crucial right now. Uh, it says VA Care opens for Cap Lejeune vets and families. Cap Lejeune is uh, military camp for uh, Marine Corps. And it says here that a few months after implementing regulations are published, the new law sets uh, no deadline for this, the VA will begin to provide hospitaliza hospitalization and medical services to any qualified veteran or family member who lived at Camp Lejeune for at least 30 days between January 1st, 1957 and December, 1st, December 31st, 1987 including including all of those in utero while their mothers lived on the base. In other words, if you were a child, you were not even born yet, you were in your mother's stomach during this time period and you lived there, uh, there was a problem with the water being contaminated. And uh, so as a result, they, they had some medical problems and the military, uh, the VA hospital, and uh, administration is making it possible for anybody during that time period who lived there, who served there, to come back and, and get treated at a military facility or the VA hospital. Uh, let's see, it says here that uh, pressing for more research and posting Navy documents detailing with the toxins on this group's website, you can get more information at www dot tftptf dot com and if you miss any of this um, we're going to be posting this on YouTube you can you can order uh, videos of this program uh, for fifteen dollars 
plus uh, shipping and handling, uh, which we'll post that later on on, on the show. And uh, again, you can you can call Mr. Samuel, you can call myself. Um, my information and uh, contact information is available at the beginning and the end of the sh show on the credits. Uh, my my email is mrdirector1 at gmail.com. So again, this is, this is crucial information for people who probably have no idea that they have benefits that are available, medical benefits for them. Uh, also, we have uh, an article that talks about um, what uh, President Obama would do in a certain case, and, and we're, we are discussing um, companies who hire, who will hire veterans. And it says here that, uh, this is uh, President Obama says, step number two, we have successfully initiated tax credits to encourage employers to hire veterans. A $5,600 tax credit for all veterans and a $9,600 tax credit for disabled veterans give that extra incentive for an employer to look at a veteran and say, I want to give you a chance. So uh, I look at this as an awesome opportunity for employers to take a, to take a harder look at veterans uh, when you're looking for new employees and also for uh, veterans to be aware of this. So when they seek employment, that uh, to be encouraged. Okay, so um, at this time, um, I want to talk to Sergeant Coon, Sergeant Coon yes, sir. from El Monte Recruiting Office. And uh, so Sergeant Coon, how did you, uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in the uh, city of Honolulu, which is located in Hawaii, uh, from the island of Oahu. Awesome. So um, how did you end up in the military? Um, well, at one point in time, uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, she wanted to pursue her nursing career. And uh, I felt, you know, it was an obligation of myself, for myself to uh, try and see if I could support her because at the time uh, we were serious, so I wanted to be able to take care of us. So um, after uh, a lot of research, and uh, a lot of questions asked uh, for my recruiter. So you, know. And you are a recruiter currently? Uh, yes, sir. And so you actually talked to a recruiter prior to becoming a recruiter? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. And uh, with that being said, uh, the, for me joining the Army, it helped me uh, be able to provide for me and my, she's my wife now, uh, begin, uh, it, it, allowed me to be able to support me and my wife awesome. Congra uh, while she was in nursing school. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'm sure she'll be happy to see you on TV. <laughs> so she's still in Honolulu or, or which island? Uh, Honolulu, sir. Honolulu. Okay. And so, um, so what is your MOS in the military, meaning military occupational specialty, which is your job? Uh, my job is a uh, signal support system specialist. Uh, what that entails is that I uh, basically uh, set up, maintain, or and troubleshoot uh, your signal systems. It can be anything from, you know, your common radio, uh, Singar's radio, or up to, uh, you know, um, it also entails uh, uh, computers. Electronic also. equipment, computers. Yes, so, um, so when you get out of the military, um, if you don't make it a career, the, the skills that you've learned will translate into civilian? Yes. The uh, with in the army, um, when you do your job training, uh, it can convert into civilian education. And uh, you, what you would do is uh, you would send your transcripts to that college, and then they would reevaluate it, and uh, they would give you credit towards your uh, MOS training. I see. And uh, for myself, I've I've known that uh, I know that I've got uh, like computer science yes. and. Um, uh, a few others can off the top of my head, but uh, okay. yes, it does convert to that, sir. And so, does the Army provide um, any benefits for college tuition? Yes, sir. Uh, with the uh, Montgomery GI Bill, you get forty thousand dollars for active duty, and uh, what they have now is called the uh, Army College Fund, 
where they give you a kicker. Where now, so at one point in my time when I joined, I got $40,000 for the Montgomery GI Bill. Now they offer up to $82,000 for college. Wow, that, that is incredible. That is um, so very substantial. And we're going to continue with Sergeant Kuhn after the break. And uh, thank you, Louis. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, sir. So we'll take a break and uh, we'll see you after the break with, with three more of our troops. Trains, buses, carpool lanes, streets, highways, pedestrian improvements, and bikeways. There's a lot more to the Metropolitan Transportation Authority than meets the eye. Find out what your Metro is doing to keep LA County moving on Metro Motion. Did you know Metro has funded hundreds of miles of LA County bikeways from the tree-draped path along the Metro Orange Line to the beach rimmed South Bay Bike Trail? LA bikeways are perfect for transportation and recreation. Take them to Metro Rail or bus or just take them for a ride. Download a free bike map from Metro.net or pick one up at a Metro Customer Center. It's another great way to go Metro. Topping our show, the wait is over. The Metro Expo line has finally arrived. For the first time in more than 50 years, light rail has returned to LA's west side. Expo Phase 1, the 8.6 mile line from downtown LA to Culver City, opened to La Cienega this spring to rave reviews. And reporter Ned Rolsma was on hand to capture the energy and excitement at the historic grand opening. All right, Expo Line is finally here. All the anticipation, all the excitement, and here we are. The day has finally come. Four different stops along the line are having festivals, celebrations, live music, food. You can't beat it. So let's get started. Before we get there, though, why don't we take a ride down memory lane for a little Expo history. Today's Expo extravaganza might seem like the dawn of a new era in regional mobility, but LA's actually been down this road before. Hi, welcome back to Troop TV. I'm David Nava, your host, and uh, I'm here with my co-host for this segment, Sergeant Kuhn, U.S. Army recruiting El Monte uh, Station, El Monte, California. So, Sergeant Kuhn, uh, I understand you have a future soldier here with you today. Yes, sir, I do. Uh, my future soldier right here is uh, William Lofthouse. And uh, what a future soldier is, is basically someone who uh, enlisted into the United States Army, and uh, they're just waiting to ship off to boot camp. I see. I remember the days back when I was a future soldier. It's awesome. It's very exciting, and you, uh, there, you have a lot uh, in store for you. Uh, so, uh, Private Lofthouse, or are you a private yet? That's yeah. correct. Yeah, yes. private life house. Uh, so what, um, what encouraged you to join the military? First of all, where are you from? Um, I'm local. I'm from uh, Arcadia, California. Arcadia, California, right up down the street from Pasadena. Mm, absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, the reason I joined was uh, I was uh, working just a minimum wage job, and I wanted to further my skills. And so uh, I joined basically for uh, college funds and uh, the discipline. So how did you hear about the Army, and how did you know that the Army offered uh, college funds? I didn't know that the Army offered college funds when I first, you know, was looking into it. Yes. Um, but uh, when I found out that they were offering schooling, I uh, basically I, I was ready to join. So that's what changed your mind, or that's what encouraged you to go through with the process? Yes, sir. I see. And uh, what, uh, Sergeant Kuhn? What is the, uh, the military benefit for college right now? Uh, the military uh, benefits for college right now is uh, $40,000. That's your Montgomery GI Bill. And uh, as I was saying before, they also offer the uh, Army College Fund, where now uh, they can pay up to uh, $82,000. And then uh, there's also another program, once you're in the military, it's called tuition assistance. And uh, the, tuition assist the tuition assistance pays up to, uh, doesn't pay up to, it pays $4,500 uh, per fiscal year. I see. That's, and that does not touch your GI Bill. That is substantial. So Private Lofthouse, what do you plan on studying while you're in the military? 
Um, uh, I'd like to, when I'm after boot camp and everything, I'd like to go and uh, take college courses for uh, police science. I see. So for after military career. Okay, and so what, uh, what MOS, military occupational specialty, did you decide to pursue? Um, I chose 11X, which is military terms for infantry. Military term for infantry. Okay, uh, and, and that is awesome. Uh, we just had a guy here last week, one of our troops, who he was infantry, but he just finished his college degree. So okay, even though it seems like, wow, what, how does an infantry, infantryman skill transfer to civilian force? Well, if you get a college degree, then you actually have qualifications that will that can lead you into a job and like for myself like I mentioned on the last segment I was a combat engineer which is only one step above infantryman and I re-enlisted after my first three years for electronics and so I've been uh, I'm an electronics technician in a government agency now and so that definitely did help me and I can vouch for that so you made a wise choice and uh, if you continue your path with the, with the military on a career basis, then uh, you won't have to worry about civilian employment until towards the end of your 20 years. So um, is there anyone you'd like to say hello to or, or goodbye and, uh, until you come back? And when you, when you come back from uh, your duty station on leave, uh, I want you to come back in, on the show and tell us all about basic training. Yes, sir. So, is there anyone you'd like to say hello to? or? I just want to say thanks to my, uh, my dad and my mom, especially my dad, who, uh, who really, really helped me because me getting into the Army um, was difficult because uh, I had some medical issues that we had to push through, and, you know, a guy got in, and it's all, that's all thanks to my dad. So That's awesome. It's important to have a good role model, and it's important to be a good role model. So... Uh, even though, you, even though you're still young and uh, when you come back, you can come on the show and talk to guys that are a little younger than yourself and you can become a role model. And uh, good luck in uh, the military and uh, I congratulate you on your, on your courage and on your, for your service. Thank you, sir. Okay, Sergeant Kuhn, yes, uh, can you introduce uh, our, our next guest? All right, uh, right here we have a PSC Zhang. And we have a I'm gonna need to move that camera. PFC Zhang to your left, and the next the person next to him is PFC Moyer. Uh, these two soldiers right here, they have already completed basic training and their advanced individual training, and uh, they are here for the hometown recruiting assistance program. And what that is is that they uh, they put in a request so that they can come back and uh, you know get to tell their story and about what they did. Uh, for their, like, their activities, what they did in basic training and how they experienced AIT. And uh, it just basically helps us as uh, recruiters to, you know, uh, easier to explain to people about, you know, what goes on when you go, to, to go through uh, these courses. Exactly. So, uh, PFC? Yes, sir. PFC Zhang. So, yes. um, where do you come from? Uh, I'm from, I'm originally from China, sir. China. And um, so, at what age did you come here? Uh, I came here around like about five years ago. I see. And so, what um, was it hard to find work, or, or what was your experience at that time? Uh, when I just got to America, I went to I went to school in Alabama actually, and then uh, I joined fraternity. And uh, most of uh, my brothers are uh, retired from my army, and uh, I heard a, a lot of story of them, and uh, that affected me a lot. And uh, then I moved to California. Then uh, I started thinking about joining the army because, uh, yeah, my brother's always talking about that. But uh, the most, uh, the most thing I worry about is uh, uh, my parents because yes. uh, I, I kind of I worry about it. They won't be able to let me join the army. Right. But uh, after, right after I talked to my father, and. Uh, He's like, uh, he say, uh, that's all right, because uh, you know what, the most uh, uh, successful man all had the like, military, military experience. Background. Yeah, and uh, why not go for it? Because, yeah, it's kind of like self-owner, because uh, I never had to work, 
before I joined the army, so I want to prove myself. Yes. And uh, then I went to the uh, recruiting station and talked to my recruiter, and uh, I found out there's a lot of jobs. Not a, the army is not about a shooting, and uh, exactly. there's uh, like hundreds of jobs you can take, which is like MIS. Like uh, the job I took is a uh, horizontal construction engineer. Okay. Uh, awesome. So uh, you mentioned your brothers, and so what school did you go to? Uh, Troy University in so Alabama. So. Troy University in Alabama. So say hello to your 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 frat brothers. Hey. Hi. All right. And uh, um, I, I thank you for your, your courage to join the military, and uh, I wish you luck, and I know that you will excel in the military. Thank you, sir. So uh, PFC Moyer? Yes, sir. Hi. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, so where, where are you from? Well, I am originally, I'm from Pennsylvania, but uh, one of the main reasons that I had initially joined the military is because, you know, my parents are in, my father just recently retired after his 22 years that he had done in the military, and yes. my mother- What branch? Army. Army. They're both Army. Um, my mother, she's been in for about 12 years now, and, you know, I mean, they've just, been a big inspiration for me. I mean, for the longest time, I had questioned a lot of the things that they had chose because I didn't know what the military had to offer. And then I got in and I realized, you know, there is a lot of things that they can offer. You know, it, it is a really nice career choice. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world because they've helped me out with a lot of like the different schooling benefits that they have and their medical and health benefits that they have too. I mean, and they take care of me just like I'm their family. And exactly. I mean, I couldn't ask for more in a job. Like, I, I love being where I'm at. I love waking up every day and putting on this uniform because it, it makes me feel proud of what I've done and proud of what I've achieved. Because I mean, I've only been in for a short amount of time, but with every step I've taken since basic training in AIT, the knowledge that I learned and everything that I've gained from that has just helped me to grow as a person and I, Again, I couldn't ask for more. So what are your plans for the future? Will you, do you plan on making the military a career? Um, I don't know if I'm going to make it a career like my father did. Yes. Uh, I, I still question myself with that because, I mean, it's something that I've considered doing. But uh, with me, I, before I had joined the military, I went to school for patisserie chef. Um, so I do pastries, I do baking, and I would love to be able to one day open my own company. Awesome. So, I mean, with the travel that I'll be getting, hopefully, from the military and everything, with the different places I can be sent, I'll get that chance to find different delicacies around the world that I can just incorporate in flavors, so. Awesome, you know, my, my nephew is a uh, pastry chef in Pasadena. Yeah. So keep in touch with me, and by the time you get back, I'm sure he's gonna be big time, and- Sounds like a plan. <laughs> and uh, maybe we can hook you up. Uh, also, so what are you doing now currently in your MOS? My MOS is a 92 Alpha, which is Automated Logistical Specialist. Um, I work in the warehouse, and if anybody needs anything as far as, you know, a uh, part for a truck, MREs, anything like that. MREs it's my are? Meals meal ready to eat. Um, food. It, it's, it's food, yes. Food. It's subsistence, food. Um, so if they go out to the field or, like, if they go to a training exercise where they have to be out training for days at a time or whatever, they have the food to keep them going. And it's my job to make sure that it gets to where it's got to go, when they need it, and where they need it. So. Awesome. Uh, thank you, BFC Moyer. It was nice. It was a pleasure. And uh, so that's a good transition into uh, this brief announcement. Uh, I have a, uh, another company. I, I do website design. My other company is... Um, Go Foods International, and these are these are uh, emergency food packages. They have a 25-year shelf life, and what we offer to all military and all emergency responders is uh, a way to start your internet business with no money and no fees. The way you're going to make money is when people buy this product, you're going to earn a commission. So there's uh, it's not like other companies where you're forced to buy X amount of product every month. But uh, this again, the, you're going to see my information uh, at, on the credits and at, at the end. And it's www. 
brotherbearmygofoods.com. So I want to thank all.